Good day friends, I am back to help you with your practice. Today we will look at standing forward bends and seated forward bends with inversions. What you will need is a strap, a blanket and two bricks. They need not be wooden bricks, they could be foam bricks. Are you ready to begin? First pose is Adho Mukha Virasana. So, downward facing Virasana. You roll the blanket from the long side to the long side. In a tight roll, put the blanket between your buttock and heel. Not the buttock and calf, buttock and heel. Sit on it, spread your thighs apart so your torso can flow through. Keep your bridge near you, so if you need, you can use it. Broaden your buttock, spread your buttock, press your hands, lift this line from navel to collarbones, navel to notch of the throat, lift, don't be in a rush to go down, extend forward. Again, think of extension, extend, 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 look straight, do not let the eyes drop. Keep looking forward, extend this line from waist corner till fingertips, extend that line, keep going, do not look down, look straight, extend, extend, you will feel the concavity in your back, feel that concavity, extend forward, extend forward, you will feel your abdomen settles on the thigh, you will feel your ribs move forward. Your armpit moves forward. Keep going. Reach. Reach. Finally, when you feel now there is no more length, you have maximized your extension, release the head and rest it on the floor. So you have to stay with breath, stay for about 10 breath cycles in every pose today, alright. So extend and head down. If your head does not touch the floor, if you feel your buttock is coming up when your head is going down. You can take a brick, put the brick so that only the forehead touches the brick, like this. Next pose is Adho Mukha Shwanasan, downward facing dog pose. You can do it with the bricks at the wall like I showed you before without talking you can do it with the bricks away from the wall feet on the wall uh, feet touching the wall so hands on the brick walk back raise your heels on the baseboard if you have and push yourself away the idea is to be very tall here you want to become very high here you want to be tall in the legs tall in the arms and if your hands, uh, if your feet can touch, your heels can touch the floor, stay with the heels on the floor, move your buttock towards the wall behind you, extend your hips, your thighs to the wall behind you and straight arms, elbows firm, knees firm, thighs tall, shins tall, chest, ribs, everything should feel as though it is getting attracted. It, as though it is moving towards the wall behind you. If you feel that your upper body is not open enough, you find that you are not being able to go, you want to increase the height. You want to increase the height of the bricks. So when you increase the height of the bricks, you will be able to get better lift in this armpit area, in this armpit band and you will be able to go and then release the head.
Bend the knees and come up. Next pose, Uttanasan. Feet are hip distance apart. Legs are like tall pillars. Torso extending forward. Arms are straight. Move forward. With your ribs from the abdomen, navel, chest, collarbones, chin, eyes, everything forward. Arm straight. Remember that this part of your back, upper back here, should not look like a, it should not look like a speed breaker. It should not look like a hump. You want to stand tall in the armpits and you want to receive this part of your back towards this breastplate, into the body. You want to feel tall in the legs, tall in the arms, long in your torso, extended in your torso and stay here. After 10 breath cycles, you can reduce the height of the brick to second elevation. Continue to look forward. When you reduce the height of the brick, the back should not become convex. It should remain concave. It should feel like your back is entering your breastplate towards your front chest. After 10 breaths, you can go for flat breaks like this. And then you can finally go for hands on the floor or cup shaped fingers on the floor. Extend your torso. flat palms and then finally you can hold your outer ankles keep looking forward extend the torso elbows bend elbows going sideways and down and then head down release this area touch yourself here touch this release this back of the neck To come out, again come into the same stages, concave shape, wait here for another 10 breath cycles and then extend the arms and come up. So you are left leg back, right leg forward, both legs are straight, hands on the brick at whatever height that allows you to keep this part of your back inside towards your breastplate, extend everything forward, torso forward, eyes forward, stay here, 10 breath cycles, lower the height, 10 breath cycles, reduce the height, 10 breath cycles. Get rid of the bricks. Cup shaped fingers. 10 breath cycles. Now remember, when you are doing Parshvotanasan, the tendency for this outer hip of the front leg will be to push forward. Resist that temptation. Make sure you use your hands and hit this outer hip of the front leg back so that you don't become uneven in your hips. So hit this hip corner back. You can use your own hands to do that. And keep that as you go down, hip going back, front leg hip corner going back and head down. Slide the hands back, look forward, extend the torso, slide the hands back. You will feel the connection from your abdomen on the thighs, your ribs on the thighs. Keep looking forward, arms back, arms back, arms back, eyes forward, chest forward, finally head down and stay. Coming out, follow the stages, cup shaped fingers, then you can have your flat bricks, second elevation bricks, full elevation bricks, stay here, change the legs, simple, 
You understood? I am not going to record the second side because I don't want to waste your time. You can pause the video and finish your sides and do again. All right, do the next pose again. So I am not going to uh, record the second side. I hope you got it. Prasarit Padotanasan. Prasar is to spread, Pada is legs, Uttanasan. Prasarit Pada Uttanasan. Pronounced as Prasarit Pada Uttanasan. So, same procedure. Maintain the height in the frontal uh, pelvic bones, in the outer hip corners, straight legs. See that your inner ankle stands tall, it doesn't sink. Transfer the weight from inner edge to outer edge. That does not mean that the inner edge becomes uh, starts lifting off the ground. Press the inner edge, transfer the weight to the outer edge. Stand tall in the legs, hitting the inner thigh to outer thigh, front thigh to back thigh. Lift this part of the buttock. If you want to go down and touch your head, it is very important to lift this buttock. Learn it over here. Press the hands, extend the trunk. See the shape of the spine here. Now reduce the height as per your ability. Make sure the upper back, this dorsal spine does not become like a speed breaker. It should get attracted to the chest here. Extend. Then you are going to remove your bricks when you are getting ready because sometimes if you topple over, you don't want bricks in front of you. Hands on the floor. See the hands are on the front edge of the mat and the heel is on the back edge of the mat. Now I take my hands to the middle of the mat. Keep extending the trunk. Lift this buttock for up and forward. Look forward. Take the hands further back. Towards the back edge of the mat. Press the wrist down. Move the torso forward. Bend the elbow. Look forward. Extend the trunk. Look forward. Bend the elbow. Finally, head down. Release this back of the neck to the floor. Shoulder blades towards the ceiling. Push the wrist. Push the feet. Coming out. Same procedure. So the standing poses that we have done so far are a fantastic preparation for inversions. Today I am going to show you Sirshasan that is known as headstand. Uh, I am going to show three different styles of Sirshasan for you where you decide what you need. Please don't jump ahead of your skill set. When I say don't jump ahead of your skill set, you must be absolutely stable in Sirshasan and feel the lift of the pose to understand that you will be able to maintain that lift without the wall. Okay, so if you feel you are shaking a lot in Sirshasan, then you are not really ready to move away from the wall. If your legs are swinging a little bit, wavy in the, I mean, uh, moving in the air, you are not ready to be in the middle. You will indirectly put strain on your neck, your eyes, your ears, you know. So uh, let the ego be outside the practice about what I can do and uh, you know, somebody else is able to do, so I should also be able to do. It's a personal journey. Please remember that when you practice. Okay. So I'm going to show you Sirshasan three different ways. The first way is for the absolute beginner who is able to do the standing forward bends well, but is not able to go up in Sirshasan even at a wall properly without... Uh, you need help to go up. You need somebody to lift your leg to go up. That means you are not ready to be at the wall. You need to practice in a corner. So I'm going to show you the corner Sirshasan. Guruji mentions it in the light on yoga. 
and uh, he says it is the most complete way of learning sirshasan safe way of learning sirshasan because you don't tilt on either side you are absolutely guided by the wall so there's no chance of becoming uh, or developing bad habits by leaning on one shoulder and uh, you know compromising the other shoulder i hope you understand and you will attempt it uh, even those who practice in the middle of the room you must occasionally uh, visit this corner and learn from the corner it will expose certain imbalances certain um, uh, you know bad habits that creep into our practice uh, so it is very important to experience it and so i am including it in this video for you to see and learn uh, so please watch carefully So for Sirshasan, we have to take a mat, fold it in half and one more half like this. Then you are going to put the smooth edge into the wall corner. If you have an extra mat, it helps to have that mat at an angle like this so that your feet don't slip. In the beginning, you will feel your you feel like your feet are going away from your face. All right. So if you have a mat, it will aid your uh, walking in part. All right. So now watch carefully. I interlock my hands, and when I say interlock, the fingertips have to touch here, and they have to be firmly in this. They should not be they should not be loose. So interlock firmly. and then each and every fingertip touch on this i hope you can see properly the thumbs have to rest on this not doing this rest on this okay now you place the finger knuckles i mean these finger knuckles the middle finger knuckles into the corner walk in see that the elbows are under the armpit elbows under the armpit walk in maximum see how high i lift my heels and how high i go up with my outer hips if you can see and hear me clearly now lift one leg up keep lifting keep lifting keep lifting play with this learn to lift like this see how the leg remains straight extend up with the inner leg inner heel reach and then you will reach a stage where you will be able to smoothly lift off fit yourself in this groove and reach up feel the wall on the left side and right side push the thighs back knees back midline of the buttock into your body sides of the body lifting up you should feel you are rubbing up to the wall not melting down against the wall coming down use the other leg keep one leg on the wall bring the other leg opposite leg down and come down slowly now i promised you three different variations first was in the corner this is against the wall and then the third will be how to move away from the wall all right i am assuming that people who can already balance in the middle of the room they don't need me to show maybe some other time i will show but in this video i am sticking to a uh, wall and away from the wall little bit away from the wall okay watch carefully because i cannot uh, have my eyes looking at the camera while i am upside down so you will have to watch carefully i will still be talking okay so same interlock fingertips here form interlock knuckles touching the baseboard so knuckles are not falling down so the wall is being used this way 
elbow under the shoulder um, sorry elbow under the armpit walking learn to lift one leg up be very stable in this leg straight leg straight leg walking 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 then other leg up push the wall move your buttock into the body push your thighs to the wall tall arms upper arms armpit moving this way watch this way this way not falling like this push coming down one leg on the wall other leg coming down straight leg keep coming keep coming coming the other leg will fall i hope you got a good visual i hope you could see it and then i will show you the third stage are you ready to move away from the wall so when you are ready to move away from the wall first of all you want to assess or figure out in your head uh, are you afraid of being away from the wall if you are very very scared it is not worth you need to practice more at the wall you need to practice more in the corner because fear makes you do things which are uh, which can cause you to injure yourself so be uh, smart about when you decide to move from the wall the requirement for this uh moving away from the wall is faith courage and memory to remember what was taught before to remember and assimilate what was taught to you before so shraddha faith virya courage smruti memory and samadhi assimilation of all these lessons that have been learned skills that have been learned and applying those skills shraddha virya smruti samadhi these four things are very necessary how to measure the distance you will sit about this way at a wall and see where my knee outer knee is right here right here i place the mat so watch again now i have placed the mat you can see it is near the outer knee ligament i hope you can see this right here then you do the same thing interlock the fingers place the arms on a line elbows on a line so you can see for yourself that you are not developing a bad habit of keeping one arm forward one arm slightly back so use this line to place your elbows interlock fingers thumb resting thumbs resting like this not doing this resting fit your head walk in now you have to lift both legs so lift the buttock bend the knees bend the knees to touch your abdomen now take your legs back and push the wall feet pushing buttock moving in move your buttock in move your buttock away from the feet towards the opposite wall this way learn this this is very important then one leg other leg and balance coming down bend follow the same procedure exhale bring these legs like this and then slowly upavishta konasan spread the legs sit on your buttock bones adjust this buttock like this so that you can feel your sit bones press your thighs down the entire surface of your thighs down back of the knee down calf down press this part of your heel bone down keep the toes facing the ceiling knee cap facing the ceiling center line of your leg facing the ceiling lift from the waist to armpit if you can't do this lift yourself because there will be a tendency to do this so lift 
Use your hands to lift. Lift. Stay. So you should feel your breastbone is lifting up, your navel is withdrawing, your legs are firm. Sit like this. Okay. If you need help, you uh, height for your buttocks, you can take a blanket. Then what we are going to do is we are going to, this is my left leg. I'm going to lift my right arm. I'm going to turn, turn, exhale and hinging from here. Exhale and hinge, hinge, hinge and grab your inner heel of the left leg. Yes. Then use your right uh, left hand to push the floor, pull this body forward, right side body towards the toes, extend. See how I use the elbow. I move this elbow towards the toes like this. So this body moves, it comes and then head down. Coming up. Go same way, this way and then do the other side. You, I am not showing the other side, you do the other side on your own. Tri Anga Mukha Eka Pada Paschimottanasana Long name, remember it. Tri Anga Mukha Eka Pada Paschimottanasana Okay? So, uh, sit in Dandasana, alright, shift your body weight, so put both hands on the left side, I am doing right knee bend, so shift your body weight to your left, so the right buttock comes up, bend the knee, point, uh, ankle, heads of the ankle resting, heel bone facing the ceiling, See that your toes are pointing back to the wall behind you. Bring the inner thigh to touch the extended leg like this. Now you see there is a slight tilt. You will feel higher in this buttock and lower in this uh, buttock, sit bone. So make sure you teach this uh, hip, this buttock bone to go down towards the floor. Alright. And to level out a little bit, take a folded blanket and support the extended leg with that blanket. So now you will feel a little more even. Make sure this bent leg you sit down a little bit more then you will feel better. Extend the arms. So you feel this body is lifting up, trunk body, abdomen, ribs, chest, collarbones, arms, armpits, lift. Look up, take the arms back, exhale, hinge from here, deepen these creases. Exhale, hinge, look forward, look forward, look forward. Do not drop your eyes down. Extend and catch your foot. Elbows bent and stay with concave spine here like this. This is more important than making your spine look like a hump and a speed breaker and then just touching the head. It's not about touching the head. It's about maintaining space. It's about creating space, length. So breath can move inside the body. I hope you understand. Again, it is not about uh, when I will touch my head down. It's about do I understand the proper way of getting into the pose, the proper way of putting my head down. All right. So this stage is very important. This. So I'm pulling my arms into my shoulders and moving my ribs forward and up i look up then i bend my arms you see how the abdomen rests on the thighs breastplate moving forward you can touch yourself extend 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 finally when you put the head down there will be a slight convex shape to the back the back muscles spread away from the center line so this way and head down Coming up, same way. And release. Breathe. Remember to breathe in the poses. 10 breath cycles in every stage. So in this stage, 10 breath cycles. In this stage, head down stage, 10 breath cycles. Uh, if you cannot put the head down, 
you can use a brick for your head all right you can rest your head on a brick so the just feel for yourself are you ready if you cannot breathe in the pose that means you are sinking in your chest you are puncturing your diaphragm so breath is uh, becoming shallow uh, you feel kind of suffocated so that should not be happening that means you need to uh, lift more and stay those of you who cannot hold the leg suppose you are very tight you can't move no problem stiff students make the best students in the long run if they persevere if they don't persevere then nobody can help them so this way with the belt this is why you need the strap yes janu sirshasan fold the blanket or whatever you are using like this and see that you have a diamond shape or like the tip of the fold is pointing to the center line of your mat all right now this pose you sit straight dandasan all seated poses begin in dandasan so clear your buttock flesh broaden the backs of your thigh sit straight legs sit erect if you get this you will get the other stuff if you don't get this you are going to struggle with the other stuff you can't write poetry and prose if you don't understand how to hold the pencil how to write a b c d so be gradual feel yourself am i able to be here be true to yourself satya be true to yourself first before you be true to somebody else you can't be true to others when you are uh, not true to yourself okay bend this knee all right now watch very carefully you are going to place the top of this foot on the floor and you are going to take this knee slightly back slightly classically it is a obtuse angle pose i am assuming that you are learning you are beginners or you don't really have a very established practice so i am showing you the uh, slightly wider than 90 degree angle okay so top of this foot resting on the floor sole of the feet facing the ceiling so as you can see my heel is now lifting towards my perineum and i sit like this slightly knee back same procedure arms up sorry i'll change it for you make it little easy for you so keep one hand on the floor lift the bent leg side arm so this is my right side right arm up this is my left leg extend exhale always very important to exhale hmm exhale and catch your heel use your left hand to push move this body forward your trunk torso chest ribs arms forward watch this elbow action extend and pull so this body travels towards this foot like this concave spine after 10 breath cycles exhale and release go down and then finally you can hold coming out good okay paschimottanasan begin in dandasan i'm using little height to sit for you so that you can get a better lift in the trunk you can get the uh, when the trunk lifts when you are erect here abdomen will be soft otherwise abdomen protrudes and you can't go forward so sit erect use this your thumb in your armpit like this to lift you arms up look straight take the arms back open the armpits stay here hinging from here with an exhalation exhale extend catch look up now pull the arms towards your shoulders pull the heels into your hips push your toes slightly toe bases like you are driving a car gas pedal of the car watch how i push push extend breathe
arms have to really work it's not just like caressing the arm and hoping for some miracle to happen arms have to be pulled towards you see this this way pull exhale bend see how the elbows are going this way it moves the trunk towards the feet like this look forward do not drop the head look forward look forward look forward lay your torso on your thighs press the thighs down coming up and release so i'm showing you shoulder stand and plow pose or sar salamba sarvangasan and halasan okay halasan is plow pose salamba sarvangasan is shoulder stand as known to you in the western world uh, you can fold your mat uh, because i'm if you don't have four to five blankets you can fold your mat i'm going to show you today uh, with only one blanket so you can see that it is possible it is not impossible to do without uh, four or five blankets but it takes a lot of practice to be able to do this from one i suggest you use more blankets so fold your mat in half and one more half so you have this uh, smooth edge then you put your blanket on top of it so already you have got about two and a half three inches of height which for a person with open shoulders if you are open you know you have done a regular practice you are open here you are good if you are not you need more blankets okay so please add more blankets now i am showing you halasan today with a chair so you can understand how to use the chair and how to get better lift all right so assuming you have these chairs folding metal chair buttock bones touching the wall shoulder corner on the blanket edge it should be little inside the blanket edge see how i place it did you see there is a little space swing the legs push the feet move these buttocks push the hands if you or you can hold and pull your mat if you then one leg another leg and you have to hit these heels outer heels against the chair and lift this body see how i use hit this hit this and lift this hands in the back scoop the back one leg up other leg up coming down bend slide off lower the buttock let your breath settle push your chair away and then roll to the right side and come I'm showing you shavasan with a chair you could do it lying down on the floor but I'm showing you another one this especially is very important for people who get tired in the backs who feel lower back pains okay so make sure that if you are a taller person if you are above 5 foot 5 feet 9 inches uh, then you add two or three blankets or one pillow to the chair seat and lie down in such a way that when you put your legs your calf muscles are resting your uh, sit bones are under the chair knee go on your elbows and spreading your back lie down receive the back of the neck 
head on the blanket. So neck should not be floating in the air. It should be touching the blanket. Release your arms. Release your buttock. Let the legs flow into the hip socket. Release your calf. Release the face expression. Open the collar bones. So chest remains open because you are uh, going to get a better breath if your chest is open. So this way. Remember in Shavasan to completely release your arms and legs. You want to be soft in the palms, soft in the feet, soft in your legs, arms, collar wounds spreading, face expression, eyes, uh, ears, tongue, biting surfaces of the teeth. Everything should be soft like a flower petal, released, surrendered, settled. Then automatically mind will become soft, withdrawn, introverted and breath will enter and exit very smoothly. It will uh, enrich your life. It is a beginning towards pranayam. So uh, pay attention to it. Do not ignore it. Do not think, oh, I don't need to do Shavasan. It is a very important stage of ending the practice. I hope you enjoyed this practice. Thank you very much. I hope you practice. If you like the video, please subscribe, please share and uh, help me in this uh, journey of spreading yoga to everyone. It has uh, completely enriched my life. It has, my life has changed because of yoga. I am thankful to Guruji VK Sayangar and his entire family for this. And I want to continue and share this work with uh, my fellow human beings. So please help me in this journey. I am trying my best. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. Take care.